SpaceX Falcon 9 launched three times this weekend after a previous explosion caused 20 Starlink satellites to be lost. It looks like Elon Musk's SpaceX is back in the saddle. Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of misty morning and that is it. The zing, it's so good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a technology day. We're gonna be talking about SpaceX and how they're back in the saddle. Very, very interesting. It went really quickly, this investigation they figured out exactly what happened and now moving forward what they're going to do. I was reading a couple of articles, actually a bunch of articles, but one I wanted to point out to you, one was on Benzinga and also on Space News. I wanna give you some information of what's going on. I wanna know what you think about all this. Do you think that this is going to push back IFT5, the Starship next launch, or not? Down below, let's have this conversation. I'll give you my thoughts at the end of this video, but I wanna hear from you. That's the most important thing. This channel is all about us, not just me just talking and rambling on and on and on as I always do, right? Anyways, before we get into these articles, I wanna say that if you enjoyed the content, throw it a thumbs up, that'll be very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not, and if you are, Thank you, I appreciate that. Click this little button over here, this notification button, so when I go live, when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. And if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, check them out, they're free. Go to jchristina.com forward slash books. And if you want more Starlink content, I put together a playlist right over here. Don't push it yet. Over here at the end of this video, check that out. There's over 300 videos just on Starlink. Helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy, and more importantly, the why behind everything, because this channel is always about the why. Also, if you just wanna say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little button down here, you can click on that, give a dollar or two if you like. If not, that's perfectly fine. The video is still free. Consider doing so, or if not, consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. I would really appreciate that. Anyways, let's jump right into these articles. Then once again, I wanna hear from you. So this is the Benzinga article. It starts out by saying Elon Musk, SpaceX, resumes launch activities over the weekend after a two-week long pause with three back-to-back -back Starlink mission launches. That's right. There was three Starlink launches this weekend while I was away. I can't even believe it. That's 67 satellites that were introduced to their new low Earth orbit location. So that's really amazing. Anyways, the article continues. SpaceX launched three back-to-back -back Starlink missions on Saturday and Sunday, taking 67 Starlink satellites in total to low Earth orbit, like I said. While two of the missions were launched from Florida, the third was launched from California. The three launches come after a two-week long pause. SpaceX launched Falcon 9 with 20 Starlink satellites from California on July 11th. However, the Starlink satellites were deployed in a lower than intended orbit because of an issue with the rocket's second stage engine. The company's launch operations have been on hold since. The resumption follows an investigation by the company into the root cause of the mishap with oversight from the FAA or the Federal Aviation Administration. Necessary design changes have been deployed to prevent a reoccurrence of the issue, SpaceX said last week. Elon Musk on X posted back in the saddle, meaning that they are now launching once again, which is great, and he did congratulate the team. Elon said, congrats to the SpaceX Falcon team on completing three successful launches this weekend. That's pretty amazing if you think about it. Two launches from Florida and one from California, all of them flawless. Well, that's not really a big deal because they've been launching hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, thousands of satellites with no problem. So let's just say they have a track record of like 99.5% or maybe even better. So they're doing pretty damn good. But yes, Elon said back in the saddle. So they are now launching and they're probably going to start launching at even more of a breakneck speed to make up for those two weeks of not being able to launch. So we'll see what ends up happening with that. Now, I was reading an article over on Space News and they kind of 
broke it down to what happened because a lot of us were going back and forth. So what exactly was the cause of this? What was leaking out? Why is it frozen so much? What the heck is going on? So they finally came to a conclusion after doing a bunch of research for the last 12 or 14 days. And this is what was said. Now, once again, this was over on Space News. They said this, SpaceX announced on July 5th that it traced the leak to a crack in a sense line for a pressure sensor in the upper stage. The the crack was caused by fatigue from the engine vibrations as well as a clamp that was ineffective in constraining the line. Interesting, very interesting. SpaceX said that it will remove the line as a near-term fix as the data from the sensor is not needed. I love that. That's how Elon is with everything, right? You know, so if you have a you have something that has let's say 100 parts and you look at it and you say, well, Eight of those parts are absolutely redundant, right? Or triple redundant, let's say. We don't need those eight, so he'll just remove those eight. The same thing happens with this sense line. We're just gonna remove it. That's gonna be the quick fix, right? That's gonna be the near-term fix. And if we need to add another one at a future date, we will do so. Anyways, it continues. The article continues. The leak caused what SpaceX called, quote, excessive cooling of the engine components. Yeah, it was pretty excessive because there was like chunks of ice all over the damn thing. Anyways, that included the ignition fluid. This is very important, called T or TEB or T-TEB, which is needed to restart the Merlin engine. Sarah Walker, director of the Dragon mission said, quote, it couldn't move through the line because it was too cold. Yeah, it was damn thing frozen up. Without the ignition fluid present at the time when the fuel and the oxygen started to mix, that caused damage to several components on the engine. Now, of course, I dug in a little bit deeper into this T-TEB stuff because some people were saying that, oh, is it kerosene or what exactly is it and no it is not kerosene it actually says it is not kerosene but it is often used to ignite engines that contain kerosene fuel TTEB is a pyrophoric liquid that ignites when exposed to air or water and is used as a starter fluid to ignite rocket engines during flight so it automatically it combusts basically when it meets air or water it ignites, it's a chemical reaction, let's say, right? So it once again is pyrophoric. The bottom line here is T-TEB needs to remain contained, all right? Once it meets air or if it meets water, boom. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically what ends up happening. Anyways, the article finalizes with NASA closely followed SpaceX investigation into the upper stage anomaly. Quote, SpaceX has been very transparent this is what is according to or is said by Stephen Stitch, the NASA commercial crew program manager. He said that the agency agreed with the outcome of the investigation and the planned fix. These sense lines that cracked, he said, quote, was potentially a little underdesigned, I would say, for that environment. The removal of the sense line will go through a rigorous certification that includes reviews and changes of the vehicle software that no longer uses data from that sensor. He finalizes with, quote, this incident emphasizes that even small elements on a vehicle can have major implications. It's a good lesson to learn for all of us in human spaceflight and spaceflight in general that small changes matter. So the bottom line here is the fix is basically removing this line, this sense line. They don't need it anymore. So, or if they do need it, they can always add another one. According to what I was reading in another article, a different article, is that they don't need this sense line because there is another procedure that is going on behind the scenes that gathers the same type of data. So it's like redundancy upon redundancy. So this one they really didn't need. And that's why they're basically nixing it. And they're saying, well, if we need it in the future, we can add it on. But for now, we're going to get rid of it. And that's what they did. That was the near fix. All right. And once again, that is exactly Elon Musk's model. Smaller, more compact, less moving parts, right? Less points of failure. Because with the least number of parts, you're gonna end up with the least possible points of failure. It just simply makes sense. And that's what he does with everything. He looks at, once again, like I said, 100 pieces, and if eight of those pieces do not need to be there because they are redundant <laughs> instead of redundant, right? 
Is that even a word? Anyways, if there's, let's say, three of them, they only need two of them, they're going to get rid of one. And that's just it. They're going to nix it. Or if it is something that they used in a previous build that's just sitting there almost like legacy, they'll look at it and say, listen, we don't really need that part anymore. Let's nix it. Let's get rid of it. And that's exactly what they do. Once again, it's lighter. And most importantly, there's less points of failure. So now that we know exactly what ended up going wrong and what Elon Musk SpaceX is doing to fix it. And we also know that they've already launched three Falcon 9 rockets consecutively over the weekend. 67 new Starlink satellites are put into low Earth orbit, which is amazing. Um, I personally think that they're going to start going even quicker at that breakneck speed, like I said before. They need to make up those two weeks and they will do it. I'm sure that they will do it. So my question to you is, do you think that this Falcon 9 failure, which really isn't a failure, it's a learning process, right? Whenever you're blowing up a rocket, but there's no humans on board, that is actually not failure. That is actually a learning process. That's how they get better and better and better. And that's what SpaceX has been doing ever since the very beginning. That's why SpaceX takes 10 months to do something Something where NASA will take 10 years to do the exact same thing because they iterate and then iterate and then innovate and then iterate again and then blow shit up, iterate, blow shit up, so on and so forth. But they have to go through that process of blowing it up to be able to iterate and to make the rockets better, to make the engines better, to make the process better, right? Less points as we see here of possible failure. So that is awesome. My question is, will this somehow push back the IFT-5, that Starship Super Heavy launch that we thought was going to happen at the beginning of August? I personally think that we're going to see the IFT-5 push back to probably either second week, maybe even third week of August. What say you? I want to know what you think because I'm excited about this. The reason, in my personal opinion, is not because of the Falcon 9 failure. It's because they are really trying to figure out this heat tile problem. And this heat tile problem has been a problem ever since way back as far as I can remember. Back with the space shuttle days, right? The space shuttle would take, let's say, six, seven months for them to go and stick on all of the heat tiling, all those ceramic tiles all over again for it to launch again. That's why it took so long. Whereas here, they're trying to do it so that they can come in and out and in and out of the atmosphere and not have to continuously replace these heat tiles. And one of the major problems that Elon Musk was saying is that these tiles have to be placed a certain distance apart of each other. And if they're too far apart, all right, then some of the plasma, that heat is going to get in and it's going to melt the craft itself. If they're too tight, they're going to end up cracking. And the reason being is the entire unit is expanding under the severe heat and then contracting under that cryo condition, the cryo cold, where it's just negative degrees, right? So you get the actual structure shrinking and expanding. So you have to get that spacing in between tiles exact. And that is a major problem because heat is changing. It could be severely hot in one area and then less hot in another area. And I was actually hearing Elon Musk talking about how the distances actually vary based on where those tiles are on the ship. Well, what happens if the ship rolls or something? Well, now the tiles are not going to be accommodating for that distance properly because they're not placed where they, let's say, should be or where that heat is going to be. So it is a major problem. And what they ended up doing is putting some type of underlayment underneath those tiles. So it's almost like tiles on top of tiles, but it's not really tiling underneath the tiling, but it is a protective layer that they are installing. And they are also coating more of the vehicle, more of the craft, with these tiles and this, let's call it this undercoating. So they're doing a lot. So I'm gonna say IFT5 will probably happen maybe let's say between the 10th and maybe the 15th, the 20th of August. That's what I'm going to guess, but we will see. I wanna know what you think. What do you think about the Falcon 9 and they are now launching again? What do you think about their quick fix or their near fix? And what do you think about the IFT5? When do you think that, that will be launched again? I cannot wait because I'll be live with you hanging out watching it. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, throw it a thumbs up. That'll be very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not. 
please do so. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the many years and my merch and my shirts like this one, as well as my tees and my book and everything else. Pick something up over at jchristina.com. Help support me and my family. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all. Bye.